Yes, guys, how you doing? Welcome back to the Spurs Talk Show. I am Sean Butler. I hope you're all happy and healthy doing the things you love. Bugs is in the background. We're down at Brooklyn's again. I hope you can do me a favor, guys. Hit the like button for me. If you enjoy the content, even if you don't enjoy this particular video, but you have enjoyed previous, then I still appreciate the uh, indirect like on the video because it helps the channel grow. Hit the subscribe button. That definitely helps the channel grow. Hit the notification bell and drop a comment. Let me know your thoughts on today's topics. And there's not a lot, so I won't keep you long. First topic, Ali Gold talking about Tosin Adirabayo being our number one defensive target for the summer. The story that drags on and on and on. Look, uh, I, think, I believe he, can't, he would count as homegrown, which is important. He is a free transfer, although as I've explained a million times on this channel to the point where I'm bored of saying it, just because you're not paying a club a fee does not mean that there's any real difference in the total amount of compensation that is leaving Tottenham Hotspur's accounts. It's just going somewhere else. It's either going in to the agents' pockets, the parents' pockets, to the players' pockets as a signing on fee, or into the players' pockets in wages that are um, inflated beyond where they would be without the transfer fee, and of course in performance-related pay. So there's very little difference, maybe 25, 30% of total money. It's just the only person who doesn't get paid in the transfer is the um, is the selling club. And Tosin's out, he's gonna, he's gonna go, but he's already turned us down once. Listen, I like this guy. I think he's a brilliant player on his day. I've always thought he was capable. He then got injured. Since he come back from injury this season, he's been excellent, really excellent. And maybe he is putting himself in the shop window. You know, not to suggest or cast dispersions on the guy's character, but there's a lot of people who you know, raise their level to something that you don't normally see on average for a very consistent period that is short term and it usually is very close. The proximity to a new contract or to a free transfer is very often just around the corner. You know, I'm sure you can remember certain strikers at Tottenham that once I was put on time played for Arsenal and Manchester City, etc., who would, uh, you know, whose levels would, would, uh, be, would be very much related to the proximity to a new contract. I'm not saying anything about that with Tosin. I'm just saying I think the guy's a good player. He's a very good player, but I'm seeing the best version of him right now than I've had in the last couple of years. And that's not a problem. It could be a great thing. It could just be a coming of age thing. The guy's a very talented player. My issue with him is he's right, no, sorry, my other, other concern is that he's another right-sided, right-footed centre-back. Now, Andrew said he doesn't care about right versus left. Andrew said, you're a centre-back, you should be able to play both sides. Uh, I, listen, Ange knows football more than me by, you know, an infinite amount. However, what I would say is, that's the equivalent of saying sleeping in bed. Uh, it doesn't matter which side you sleep on. It does. It does. You sleep on the left side of the bed for the for 10 years, and then the next night you have to sleep on the right side. You understand what I'm saying. It's not the same. It's not the same. So having four centre-backs, three of whom are all more comfortable on the right than the left, is... I'd say just slightly undesirable, but he is a very good player, no doubt about it. He pops up with goals, he's fast, he's, he's good in the air, his positional sense is, is very impressive. He, he fits Angeville very well. Let me ask you a question. If he is the guy, and God forbid something was to happen next season where you had an injury, a long-term injury, to Van de Ven and to Romero at the same time, how would you feel about a back two or two centre-backs being Dragosin and Tosin, one of whom would be shoehorned into the left-hand side? If you're OK with that on paper, then you should be OK with Tosin as the, as the next centre-back signing. Personally, as much as I like Tosin, I think we can do better. I think we need a left side, a specific left-sided one. And look, there's plenty out there. There's plenty out there. We, we, we've been linked with loads. There's loads that we haven't been linked with that we could or should be linked with. We'll do a show on that. But I would like to see a proper left-footed, left-sided centre-back that can slot in a little bit more seamlessly. I know Ange doesn't care, but you know, this isn't Ange's channel. This is Sean's channel, and Sean's channel says Sean does care. <laughs> anyway, so that's the toasting story. We'll see what happens in the summer. We'll see what happens. So the second story of the day, guys, is about a player called Hugo Larson. Have you heard of him? 
Well, I heard a little bit about him a couple of years ago. He was coming out of Malmo. He was a uh, Swedish 17 year old, the next big thing. And apparently he became the next big thing. He went to Frankfurt and I think he's had 38 appearances this season. And his, his valuation, according to Transfer Market, has gone from 1.5 million to about 30 million euros. But according to Frankfurt, he's now valued at 68 million euros. Now, I don't watch Frankfurt that closely. I see their highlights and stuff and the European football and when I'm doing a little bit of research. But I have put him through the Y Scout tool. And this kid does look very, very special at a young age. His ability to break up play, to crunch tackles and then get back on, on his feet. The, the speed in which he can crunch and be back up get the ball before someone else comes close and then put a first time defence splitting pass in is really, really impressive. He is a real talent. I think he's got a couple of goals this season from the, from the DM and he is that monster six that I guess we're looking for, or he at least plays in that monster six position, trying to be that monster six that we're looking for. And I guess that's where the links start, but also of course he's Swedish and you know, everything's Swedish right now is linked to Tottenham. I'm pretty sure IKEA is going to be announced as a new sponsor of the stadium. Ulrika Johnson's going to come back in as chief of staff. I don't know. But everything to do with Sweden right now is 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 a you know linked to Tottenham. We've got the multi-club ownership thing with that Joe Garden thing that, that might materialise. We've got the kid coming in as well who's doing um, amazing things. I mean, where does it stop? Well, I don't know. I think it stops here. I personally can't believe for a single second that Tottenham would spend that sort of money on a player who has just done one year of, um, you know, very, very impressive. No, no, no question about it. Very impressive uh, performances. But if you look at his stats, and we're a stats-based company now, right? We just sack loads of scouts because we're going after the data. Well. The data doesn't really look too great, and I put it on the screen for you. Against all other midfielders in the top five leagues, you're not seeing too much green bars at the top. It's a lot of orange bars, a lot of 50, 60 percent. But the kids 19, someone to watch for. But look, only reason I mention the story is because it's pretty much the only other thing that's out there today, and it's been, it's been shared around a few different places. I've looked at him. I think he's okay. I think he looks like he'll become a good player, but. Uh, is he coming to Tottenham? I'd be absolutely, absolutely amazed. Uh, last thing I was going to say, guys, um, listen, I don't know, I'm not a very particularly good model. I'm a big, big, heavy guy, but you can see my hoodie right now, Spurs Talk Show, on the black hoodie. I've been wearing this, macking this for a long time, and people have been asking where they could get hold of one. And so I finally attempted to set up a Shopify store that is now apparently linked to the YouTube channel. So you can go to shopping and you can find a few different items. Look, it's the first time I've done it. I don't know if I will set it up properly or not. I hope it works. If you're interested, would love to uh, let me know what your, what your thoughts are. If there's any screw ups, I will do my best to resolve. For those of you that are not from the UK, so VAT will be attached to the UK items. For those of you from Ireland, Australia, or America that might want to participate, it's so complicated trying to figure out and understand how to, you know, do I collect the taxes and who do I pay them to and how much and all that stuff. It's, it's very, very uh, difficult. So I think for the time being, I've said it as only UK customers because I don't want the headache of having to, to pay taxes to people in other countries. But I might turn them on and then turn on those markets, but then leave the taxing stuff to yourself. So that if you do buy something, then you might get a phone call from the, I don't know, Australian import people or something saying that you owe a pound 50 or a dollar 50 to release this. I don't know. Either way, the tax would be put on to the price either way. But if anyone is familiar with Shopify, <laughs> if anyone is a master of merch stores and how to set up all this nonsense around taxes and duties and all this crap, then please let me know. Otherwise, listen, uh, I'm going to wish you a very happy day. I'll see you on the next one. Like, subscribe and comment. And as always, bye-bye.